There's a new series on Apple TV called Extrapolations about climate change, which is actually very, very interesting. I'm Sean Kidney. I'm the CEO of the Climate Bonds Initiative. Let's have a look together. Scientists told us way back then that if the average temperature on Earth increased beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius, there would be devastating consequences. And they were right. Yet here we are in 2037, considering the possibility of an increase of two degrees. But what happens after two? What happens when the corporations that are destroying our world say that our economies will fail? If we don't allow the temperatures to rise by 2.1 or 2.2 degrees? Unfortunately, the IPCC has indeed been saying since 1988 that we're going to see temperatures of 1.5 to 2 degrees if we don't take drastic action. And in fact, way beyond as the century goes, it's, it's terrifying. And the weird thing is, you know, it's happening like a script, exactly as the IPCC scientists mapped out 30 years ago. Why not follow? Because we haven't taken action. Well, now we need to take action. Germany and Italy are losing crops to drought and infestation. Austria and Poland are dealing with nationalist movements. Raising the number of people the EU is willing to take in right now is a hard ask. We need to focus on temperature. So where do you suggest we tell our people to go? They have no water. I think we'd all prefer to solve the problems that make people leave their homes in the first place. Agreed. The goal here is consensus on temperature. Keeping it below two degrees is critical. If the temperature goes up two degrees or 10 degrees, it doesn't matter if you have no water. We're willing to support certain proposals related to temperature and carbon as long as our basic needs are guaranteed. Can you elaborate on the term basic needs? Unlimited refuge in Europe. Water. And water is indeed going to be the front line of impact. It's going to be heat, it's going to be storms, it's going to be failure of water systems, but above all, it's going to be scarcity of water. We're going to be building a lot of desal plants, but that's hard to do, or to do enough of, for something like two billion people are going to be exposed, two billion. I know that not every building can be saved, and so I stand before you today in hopes that the Department of Sea Level Mitigation will look favorably upon our application for protection. As a person who believes there is power in the physical presence, I'm grateful to stand before you. Miami has a special problem. The nature of its geology means we can't do what the Dutch have done in the Netherlands to build coastal protection from floods. Uh, it just isn't going to work. And there are going to be other cities around the world like that. Hey, we need to prepare and we need to actually start understanding the nature of the changes coming through and plan accordingly rather than to continue to build buildings in places that are at high risk. It's simple really, isn't it? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Mumbai is an exciting, vibrant, dynamic city, full of hustle and bustle and incredible innovation, and one of the most exposed big cities in the world to floods, to storms, to typhoons, to air pollution, to all sorts of things. It's scary. There are solutions though. It's important to note, there are solutions, both large scale in terms of getting emissions down and small scale in terms of making Mumbai resilient. We just need to act. Can you believe these people? Hard to imagine they can march with their heads up their ass. They say ice sheet in Greenland is gonna break down the middle. 79 and ice sheet. Right, we'll build there next. They say three meter sea level rise by the end of the century. They? They also said the same thing about Miami. All we did was make a fortune retrofitting the buildings, and guess what? When it goes up another couple of inches, we'll r again and make even more money. Here's what you need to know about global warmings. It will all go to at the end of the century, 100%.
we'll be dead. We'll have to miss it. But we'll be smiling in gold-plated coffins designed by Kanye. So let's focus on the now. Top of the World Casino is going to be the best casino in the world. Hey, it's extreme. But fundamentally, what we're dealing with is a conflict between short-termism and long-termism. We're dealing with problems that require long-term solutions, long-term investments, and, lo and will deliver long-term sustainability. And yes, there are some changes we need to do to the maximizing of short-term opportunities. This is, of course, the challenge facing our financial system, but above all, facing climate change. One opportunity we have is that asset owners, institutional investors are long-term investors. They need sustainability, and that's what green bonds the group are trying to bring to bear to exactly that problem. You did not see one. I did too. No oh, way! Those haven't existed for like thousands of years, like since the dinosaurs. Did she introduce you to any dinosaurs? That one is real. My mom saw it. It's what she does. She studies the last ones. Want to see me fart out a tiger? <gasps> What's wrong with you? You should be careful, Ezra. Yeah, liar. Red means dead. My mom knew that tiger. She did. The world made you sick. Because we made the world sick. Welcome to Winter Chill, the best immersive therapy for heat-related conditions. Come on, Ref. Why can't I play? Sorry, buddy. Looks like you had a bit of an episode today at school. Heat is going to be the defining risk issue in cities going forward around the world. How to avoid extreme heat, how to build a urban environment that can give us refuge in these waves of heat that will come through, combined with lack of water. Yikes, it's painful when you see a good, a good story like that. What's the whole series? It's, um, it's chilling. By the way, don't get too depressed because it's important to understand we still have solutions. It's just a matter of acting. And it's exciting roller coaster we can get going on to act but we need to act with speed and alacrity to avoid the worst of the future we're seeing.